everybody, and welcome to today's show and tell where I will be talking about something a little bit different. Now, those of you who've seen my videos in the past know that I do like camera, uh, video camera reviews and gear reviews in that world. But uh, given the current situation, I haven't been doing a whole lot of shooting out and about. But I have been doing a whole lot of eating, uh, eating pizza specifically. And given that I will take any chance I can get to talk about pizza, I am using today's show and tell to talk about uh, my pizza oven. This is the Uni 3. This is a... Uh, a pizza oven, uh, specifically designed to make pizzas in a very particular uh, manner, the Neapolitan style pizza. This model here, I got a few years back and it's a little bit older in terms of what Uni offers. Uni is a company that makes all sorts of pizza gear. Uh, they came out with a, uh, like the Uni 1 and 2, these pizza ovens, and then it kind of reiterated and, and, and did little uh, design quirks. And they kind of came out with this version, the 3, which uh, was designed to take in um, taking wood pellets and give you a wood-fired pizza oven at about 900 degrees. Now, since then, they've come up with a whole sorts of different products that use like gas. Uh, there's like gas versions, there's hybrid versions if you don't want to deal with the wood pellets. But like I said, I got this a while back and they're not cheap. They're pretty expensive, so I'm not going to be upgrading this anytime soon, but I still use it and I still love it for making Neapolitan style pizzas. I make a ton of pizza. I've been making pizza forever. Um, I've read tons of books on pizza. I've done some very uh, serious research on the subject of pizza making and uh, I kind of fall all over the place now I love all sorts of pizza. I don't I'm not a purist in any any particular word of the sense I I love Neapolitan style. I love the American the New York style uh, Detroit Chicago. I love it all and I make pizzas based off what I feel like or if I throw a pizza party Which I probably won't be doing for a little while longer um I will, I will kind of uh, ping pong back and forth through different styles of pizza to give everybody a different uh, flavor, uh, if you will. But that being said, this Uni is a pizza oven that really excels at making Neapolitan style pizzas. Now I have, uh, I've, uh, I also do it, since I make different pizzas, I also make a lot of different pizza doughs. So uh, uh, there's tons of different dough recipes out there and you can find your most basic dough, which uses like the yeast, water, flour. But I have kind of developed a, a little bit of a, um, of a hybrid sourdough pre-ferment uh, Polish style dough. And I will share that dough recipe with you at the end of this video if you care to uh, take a crack at this since you probably have a sourdough starter by now and everybody's baking. So give it a whirl. Uh, but let's talk about the uni. Now, when you think of pizza, you kind of have, um, let's take takeout pizza, for example, right? You have this, uh, this pizza dough, it's cooked in an oven at about 500, 600 degrees or about 10 to 12, 15 minutes. That's not this at all. And, Traditional Italian sense, you want to get these ovens up to like 700 to 900 to 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And to do that, you need um, you need to kind of have an oven that uh, controls the elements, controls the heat, controls the way the uh, 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 the convection works, can, and also controls the the heat at the bottom. So you get this, uh, you get a very specific crust, which is more of a really light, airy fluffy but also like crispy on the outside and kind of flimsy sort of like moist pizza dough it's a it's, it's a hard thing to explain if you have if you, if you had an italian neapolitan style pizza you'll know what i mean uh and it's hard to do that with a regular oven you can't just throw your pizza dough into your convention 500 degree oven because you'll end up with something a little denser a little something a little more cooked through with this that intense heat cooks the pizza within like two minutes uh for this oven i mean you can make a neapolitan style with like a minute and a half so a minute and a half at 900 degrees versus your home oven cooking 500 for 10 minutes. And those flavor, those texture and flavor variances are huge when you uh, really start to look at it. Um, which is one of the reasons I love pizza. I love pizza because there were, even though it's just, I love making pizza because I love tweaking little elements of the dough, the time, what you put in there, how you cook it. All these things can develop such different flavors across the board. And it's been super fun to, to learn and research and develop those flavors for myself. And that's really kind of why I wanted to get it into pizza making is because I wanted to make the perfect pizza for me, right? Like there is no perfect pizza for anybody. There's no objective. There was no oh, Detroit, Chicago is not real pizza. Uh, New York's not real pizza. It's all real pizza. It's all pizza. It's all good. But you really want to, if you're going to get into this as a hobby, which you should, it's fun, um, then you're really tweaking these recipes to your specification of what you want from the perfect pizza. Uh, that's kind of rad. So anyway, let me get into a little bit of how this works. It's pretty simple. Uh, you got your, get your pizza oven here. It's assemble, you assemble it, you get it in the mail, you assemble it, it takes like 20 minutes. Uh, and what's inside of here is, 
basically a pizza stone. Uh, those of you who made pizzas at home uh, might have bought a pizza stone from like William Sonoma. Uh, I used to do that. I used to buy stones uh, and they'd always crack in the oven. This has been taking an intense heat over, I don't know, almost 100 pizzas. Uh, has not cracked at all. Um, also, I used to just go to Home Depot and buy like unglazed ceramic tiles and line my ovens that way. Um, and there you can like make almost two layers and try to con control the heat that way. Uh, and it gives you, it's a lot cheaper. It's like two bucks a tile. So you can kind of go nuts and experiment there. I love baking steels. I wish, I have a baking steel, but it doesn't fit uh, this opening here. Uh, if I could change one thing about this, it would be get a steel in there uh, because there are some flaws in this that I will go over. But basically you put the stone inside of this guy and it fits nice and snug. And you take these wood pellets. You can buy wood pellets at any of your barbecue stores or some, a lot of grocery stores have them. Uh, you buy these wood pellets, you load up the hopper back here, you take a propane torch or some kind of starter and just blast that guy with heat and get that thing going. Um, it's gonna take about 10 minutes to get this thing heated up to 900 degrees and get the stone heated up to what you want the stone to be. Because again, you want the stone to be hot enough to cook that bottom of the pizza at the same time that that heat on top is blasting it. So everything kind of culminates in one perfect cooking temperature. Uh, and if you do this right, you should have like some like leopardy in the bottom, which is these black and white spot, uh, black and uh, like black and spots all over the bottom of the pizza and your cheese and toppings. This You don't want to use too many toppings in this, but your toppings should be cooked. That's probably a good point to make is that this isn't gonna be a pizza where you're gonna load on toppings. Uh, because of that heat, it's harder to cook everything through evenly. You really wanna uh, maybe put one topping on this thing. I do a lot of margaritas in this, but I also use cast iron to cook my uh, to cook my toppings separately. You might have seen this if you've been in any like pizzeria that has uh, a specific Italian pizza oven, you'll see them cook the toppings in little cast irons and then add the toppings after the pizza's been cooked because the pizza cooks in two minutes, take the pizza out, you put the toppings on. So I do that. Uh, and I cook other things in this as well. Um, you have this uh, you have this wood chip flavor or wood pellet flavor. You can impart that in all sorts of things. Here I am cooking uh, some Impossible Burgers for my wife in here. Uh, I do veggies, meats, but you gotta be pretty good with this thing because controlling the heat is pretty tough. Like I said, you're just putting pellets into a hopper turning it on and blasting that thing. And the hopper only lasts maybe about, this is a guess, but like four or five minutes between, you're constantly kind of refilling this thing. And you wanna refill it to make sure that that heat is going. Uh, and so there is one way you can control the heat and that's to just learn the oven and learn how, uh, you know, how intense that heat is and then adjust your pizzas. Sometimes I'll do like a margarita right away and then I'll make another thicker pizza and some more toppings. And I know the heat's down. And if you have a, you know, if you have a, a, a gauge and a thermometer, you can measure this. But once the heat gets down to like 600, 700, then I can throw in a pizza that I know will cook in those conditions pretty well. So it does take a little bit of a while. If you get the gas burner version, you should have an easier time controlling that heat. Uh, and I'll probably, in some point in the future, upgrade or build my own uh, build my own larger one, still using wood, and that way I can I can know the hot spots of the oven and move pizzas around and, and learn where to cook certain pizzas at. This is such a small such a small area and such intense heat that you're really only doing Neapolitan styles, um, which is kind of unfortunate. Yeah, I don't I don't like one use kitchen items, but in this I make so much pizzas. In this scenario, I kind of wanted uh, something more unique, um, and it's a great gateway into whatever my next, now that I understand pizza ovens better, whatever I decide to build or buy next. So, pellets go into the hopper, heats that thing up, you put the, um, put this guy on, the uh, the lid on, uh, you should see heat and smoke just coming out of this chimney here. And then you can kind of get a gauge, you take, the, you take the lid off and you should see the flames kind of crawl along the top of the pizza oven. And then you want to make your pizza and get it in there uh, quickly. Uh, again, one of the flaws of this thing is that everything kind of happens in windows. You have your perfect windows for everything, and those windows are relatively short. The heat maintaining, uh, the pellet hopper maintaining its like full capacity is pretty short. Um, you know, when the reason I want to steel in there is because ceramic. Once I get the first pizza on there, I take it off. That steel, that ceramic has cooled way down, and with the steel, it actually be able to retain that heat a lot better. So I can do multiple pies uh, in a faster amount of time and take advantage of those smaller windows. So, you get your pizza ready. Now, the uni comes with their own little, uh, little metal pizza peel. I don't like using these 
for my uh, the preparation of pizzas. I do a little bit wetter doughs sometimes, a little bit stickier doughs. Um, and you gotta use a ton of flour, even on your basic doughs, you gotta use a ton of flour on this to get it moving. And if you let it sit too long, that uh, dough will kind of suck up the flour and it'll stick and it'll be a mess trying to get it off. That's, um, that's unfortunate because I don't like to add too much extra flour to my pizza when I'm cooking it. I like to, after I make the dough, I want it to be um, kind of kind of there. Uh, I want to use very minimal semolina or flour to get it sliding off. So I kind of built a burner um, pizza peel. I had some, I had some leftover poplar and mahogany. Don't use mahogany for cutting boards, I think. Um, but there's some leftover wood that I glued together, and I made it about the same size as the Uni's, uh, the Uni's pizza peel. And you don't want to be using wood too much with high heat ovens like this, but I like having something a little more porous that I can just dust a little bit of assembly on and really get the pizzas moving a lot quicker. So what, what I did, I've, you know, it's actually, it's been holding up okay. It's got a little burn marks. Um, like I said, this is a burner peel. I'm okay with this getting a little damage, but um, well, yeah, what I do is prepare the pizza on this guy, toss it in there, close it up, and then I use this as like my maintenance one uh, because uh, because what you want to do after you get that pizza in there, you want to set a timer. Like I said, a minute and a half, two minutes is a pretty, again, pretty short window to get these pizzas cooked correctly. And you do want to give them a rotation because most of that heat's going to be back here. And so it'll get uh, a lot of cookage, co a lot of cooking happen in the back. And you want to rotate it through about halfway through. I may do three times just to get really even leoparding all around the crust. Um, and so I have a timer on my phone throw it in there, set the, the stopwatch, and I just keep an eye on it. And then open, take, rotate, close. Open, rotate, and then by that second rotation, I have a pretty clear idea, like, oh, I got 10 seconds left until this thing is right, uh, or 13 seconds left until this thing's burnt. Uh, and I have burnt my fair share of pizzas early on. But now I feel like I have a pretty good gauge of how that works. That's about it. You take out the pizza, you refill that hopper, let that thing heat back up again, uh, and you're gonna be making a couple more pizzas. That is the Uni um, 3 pizza oven. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, uh, Uni makes a whole line of things uh, with like the Coda brand of uh, pizza ovens, like Breville makes, there's a, a couple companies that are kind of up there making these pizza ovens. And there's some versions that are indoors if you're gonna spend a bit more money. But this is your typical outdoor wood pellet fueled pizza oven in the Uni 3. Um, one of my favorite little cooking adventures over the last, four or five years whenever I bought this. Uh, so there you go. Eat some pizza, use that flour that you've often been buying up from all the stores that I can't find, um, and enjoy some good pies. Uh, I will see you guys next time on another show and tell. Maybe there'll be more video stuff or more food stuff. I don't know where I'm gonna be. I don't know what's going on here. But uh, tune in next time, and here is my pizza dough recipe for you all to try out if you so choose. New York classic slice, melty gooey mozzarella. Crispy dough tomato. Now let's go over my pizza dough recipe. Uh, all of these measurements are gonna be in baker's percentages, which is a little more accurate than using like measuring cups and tablespoons. Um, these are all weighed through grams uh, in relation to the flour, the flour being the 100%. So in these numbers here, you see the flour is 100. And let's say, for example, the starter is 20. That means that the starter is gonna be uh, 100 grams if the flour is 500 grams. Does that make sense? Everything is based off of the flour being at 100. So. Let's go over this. Again, I do uh, multiple different pizzas. This isn't a pizza that I'd make just on like a Thursday night. This is kind of a pizza that I would prepare if I'm gonna do like a weekend pizza party or something. If I'm gonna have a special occasion, um, yeah, I'll on like Sunday, and I know that I can prepare this on like Friday and get it like cold fermented and ready to go for Sunday with more developed flavor. And that's really what you're doing with these fermentation times is like you're developing flavor, using the yeast to um, interact with the flour and the dough and develop in a way that's something a little more complex than your typical just water, uh, water yeast, let it rise, knead, ready to go in an hour. You can do pizza that way. You can get pizzas done if the day of if you wanna make them that way. Um, but if you're interested in like testing out the different uh, again, the different like times and what time does to pizza and what these different um, fermentation times and bulk fermentations and pre-ferments do to pizza. Uh, it's worth checking out this way. So 
here it is. This is my pre-ferment. Now I use, like I said, a sort of a poolish method um, where I'm creating a pre-ferment. I use my sourdough. I use about 20% sourdough starter as my pre-ferment. So I take it out the night before and I feed it to about the grams I'm gonna need for this recipe. Um, I get that starter going and the next day I will uh, check the starter, see if it's active, and I will start adding in the rest of the ingredients. Now, for flour, I use unbleached bread flour. I haven't been able to find any bread flour right now. It's all been sold out, but uh, all purpose will do okay. It has a little bit lower of a protein count. Um, you really want to have like 12, 13, 14% protein. Um, you want that gluten there to kind of to rise and you can really create a network that is going to be um, conducive to a lot of stretching and folding and whatnot and pulling out pizzas. So for one of these pizza batches, I did a little bit of milled wheat. I have a milled uh, a milling attachment for my KitchenAid and I mill my own spelt, mill my own uh, comet flour. So I have berries, wheat berries all around and I like to add a little bit for texture. Uh, not too much for this recipe. If the flour is 100%, I'll do 90% on uh, all-purpose bread flour and 10% of the milled wheat berries. So from here, I do a little bit of an auto lease, meaning that I'm I'm soaking, I'm taking my water, taking my wets, and I'm taking my flours, and I'm combining those together, and I'm letting them sit for a little bit. Um, a to let that flour hydrate, let it get, let it soak in that water, especially if I'm using. Uh, milled wheat flour, uh, it, it tends to be a little bit thirstier and it has a little bit longer of a time just to soak it all in. So I like to auto lease and throw in that sourdough starter, that pre-ferment, to get it moving. Now I want that to get, I want that to get into the, uh, the flour early so that it starts developing its flavors because once that yeast hits, once that commercial yeast hits, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to accelerate like crazy. So I get the water, I get the flour, and I get the starter. And uh, I save up probably about 50 grams or so, just a little bit of water left over that I can add to the yeast. So uh, I take that into account for these measurements. I don't throw in all 65% of the water. Uh, I use maybe 60% maybe of the water here and then save that 5% to activate the yeast later. From there, you have your auto lease. I let that sit for about two hours or so. Uh, let that really soak in. Um, and then I go in and I create my, uh, my bulk ferment yeast uh, concoction here. So I take about 1% yeast. This is a very small amount. Um, most scales won't even uh, uh, a measure, most scales won't even weigh to what you need. So you can just add like a, a half a teaspoon or so, uh, or less than that, to uh, the rest of your water uh, and mix that thoroughly and let that activate. You, you know what yeast looks like when it starts to foam up. It's you want to have that uh, like a, a room temperature, a little bit warmer temperature, like 80 degree water. Um, let that yeast kind of come to life. And then I toss that in to the dough with the salt and the diastatic malt. 2% of each of these. 2% sea salt, 2% diastatic malt. You can buy diastatic malt at your supermarket bulk area, but uh, if you can't find that, use a little bit of like honey, any kind of a any kind of sugary, I guess. Some people use sugar, some people use honey. I like diastatic bowl because it's not too sweet and it does add a little bit of texture and browning ability to the dough um, without changing the flavor too much, which can happen with too much honey. So if you can't find diastatic malt, experiment with a little tablespoon of honey or something. So I add my diastatic malt and my salt and the water with the commercial yeast mixture and I, I, start, I start really working that in. The, the water and the yeast is gonna help push in that salt into the dough, and now you're gonna start your kneading. You're gonna knead this either on a mixer or by hand for about five to 10 minutes. You wanna, you don't wanna over knead this dough, but you do want to knead it to get yourself uh, like a nice ball. And it'll still be, the glues will still be tight, and, and it's not gonna be as elastic as you think it should be, but that's okay. After every time you work with this dough, you wanna let it, set it, set it down and let it rest. You wanna let the glutens relax and it'll start taking shape into like what it's essentially gonna be. Um, and during this time, the fermentation's happening. So I do about five minutes of kneading. I let it sit for about a half hour to an hour. And then I go back and I give it another knead. And then uh, I, uh, once I'm feeling pretty good about it, I roll that thing up and I divide it into like four. So however much dough you're working with, however much pizza you want, I roll that into fours and I let that do a bench rest, meaning I'll just let that sit out at room temperature with like a cloth over it or something and let that sit for about 30 minutes to an hour um, before taking those balls and putting them on a baking tray. Normally you wanna do like two baking trays to cover it, but I didn't have a second one, so I just use saran wrap. Um, put that thing in the fridge and let that cold ferment for up to two days. 
when it's time to go, take that thing out of the fridge and let it sit at about for about an hour. Uh, and it's going to warm up. The glutes are going to relax back, uh, back into a, a workable state. You'll know that it's not really working if you start pulling it and it wants to snap back together. Things are still too tight, it's still too cold. What you'll start to see is some bubbles developing. Now, any big bubbles, any big air pockets, you wanna pop those. If you don't pop those, you get this. I let one go and it became big and burnt and everything kind of fell off it. You do want to have some air bubbles. Um, at this point, it's very important to uh, be delicate with your dough. You do wanna stretch, you do wanna spin, you do wanna like get into its shape, but you don't wanna give it any more kneading. You don't wanna do what's called degassing the dough. You can do that, you can degas it, and you'll get a flatter pizza like this, something a little crispier, um, if that's what you want. But if you want that airy, airy dough, uh, you do wanna be very gentle with it at this point and just uh, stretch it out. That's why people use their hands and don't use rolling pins, is because they wanna just naturally bring that dough, enlarge, enlarge in that dough while keeping um, while keeping all the gas inside and all the all the gluten's kind of relaxed a bit so that once it hits this oven, it'll rise up instead of just uh, becoming like a dense crack. So turn that thing into the shape of the pizza you want. Um, go thin, don't go too, too, too thin. If you start to see the cutting board beneath the pizza, uh, you're too thin. So uh, get it pretty thin, however thin you like, and throw your toppings off. Uh, sauce, my sauce is pretty simple. I just use canned uh, tomatoes, just the tomato parts crushed with a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of, uh, here I have fresh oregano on hand, so I use that. Um, and then you wanna put on less than you think you should. That's good life advice overall. Put on less than you think you should. You just wanna give it a nice little light uh, coating of tomato sauce and then add your mozzarella. A lot of people like fresh mozzarella. It tends to be a little wet for me and it kind of soggies up the pizza. And if that's your thing, that's a Neapolitan salad, that's, uh, that's totally fine. You can use that. I like low moisture mozzarella because I like to have a little bit of uh, integrity with my pizza. Uh, I like to be able to eat it uh, with my hands. Forks and knives are acceptable, but I like using my hands, so I use low moisture and that doesn't let off as much water into the dough. Uh, and you basil, if you're making a margarita, basil can go on before or after. I like after, I like the freshness, or you can put a little bit on before, get that nice and browned up, or a little bit on after, or a combination of both. There you have it. Add a little Calabrian chili oil if you want to get a little heat onto that, and you got yourself a nice pizza. Uh, notice the flavor differences. It's not just a bread underneath cheese and dough, or uh, cheese and sauce. This is um, something a little more complex. There's like some, some textural things happening and some crispiness on the outside some airiness on the inside and like those flavors from the uh the sa like from in this instance that that little bit of tang from the sourdough uh and just that that like almost like creaminess of the of the airy dough on the inside with that like little light crunch on the outside and then just like the leopardine adding some just a little bit of uh uh a little bit of that char it's not overpowered but it really adds something that like symphony of flavors and textures happening with this is is amazing there you have it there is my pizza dough recipe i've experimented with like all sourdough pizza and i love sourdough love making sourdough but i don't know if it i don't know if i've quite, quite gotten it down to do full sourdough so i tend to use a little bit of commercial yeast just because of its strength that you really you can really like it's forgiving and it's got a lot of strength which is great for pizza uh, where a Saturday you have to be a little more delicate and, and kind of work in your folds and stretches and slaps and uh, and 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 prepare prepare it uh, massage that thing into its its final loaf. Whereas with this you get a little more leeway, a little more consistency. There you have it. There's my pizza dough recipe. Here's my uni oven. Uh, bon appetit, everybody. I will see you next time on Tested Show and Tells of Something. Bye.